Nugmui. Numerous legends and stories surround this woman, but the following seems to be the most oft told and consistent. During the Qing or Qing dynasty, Emperor Quan Hisi and his Manchurian government felt threatened by the Shaolin monastery called Si Lam of Mount Sung in Honan province. Qian Hisi deemed that the temple had become too powerful through its Kung Fu training and sent troops to destroy it. But it has been suggested that it was in fact a treacherous monk named Bak Mei who ruined that temple, setting it alight from the inside. Only a handful of people escaped, including the temple's abbess Nigmui, who sought shelter at the White Crane Temple on Mount Tai Leung. Nigmui dedicated herself to finding a system of Kung Fu powerful enough to defeat the Manchurian forces, discarding the old ways of learning as being far too con time consuming and impractical. Why spend years conditioning bones and developing superior muscle strength, she demanded of herself and others, when a bigger, tougher opponent could be defeated with just a finger jab to the eyes or a lightning quick, uh, quick kick to the groin? Thus, Nygmui developed deadly sounding techniques such as flexible reed spine and iron wire continuous return. While at the White Crane Temple perfecting her system, Nygmui met and befriended a young woman called Kim Wing Chun. Yim, who was still in her teens, owned a bean curd shop with her father, her mother having died while Yim was still a child. So beautiful was Yim that a local ne'er-do-well had expressed his strong desire to marry her, or, failing that, to take her by force. Yim appealed to Nigmui to help her, so off went the pair into the mountains where Nigmui taught the young woman everything she knew. Finally, Yim emerged from the mountains to defeat the bully in spectacular style. In honour of her protégé, Nigmui named the new, back to basic style of fighting she'd managed to perfect Wing Chun. And from Miss Wing Chun, we can in fact trace a direct link to Bruce Lee. For Yim Wing Chun taught her husband, who in turn taught an opera performer, and so it continued for a few more generations until a gentleman with the suggestive title of Money Changer One found himself instructing a teenage boy called Yip Man, who would eventually be the only person to teach Lee, arguably the most famous martial artist ever.